gobble, gobble, gobble. New, new, new. Gobble, gobble, gobble. New, new, new. All right. Let's, uh... It's like the one day of the year I can say gobble, gobble whenever I want. Yeah. You say it all year long. That's the only time you do it live on video. I know. It's true. All right. First up. First up, we've got um, a new version of this uh, clip for Clue or Microbit. This is a great uh, addition to... Um, micro bit products. If you want to create something that a micro bit plugs into, this is a surface mount component. So it's it might like, work with that Sci Five board too. It would work with anything that's compatible. What's really nice is if you go you go back one. You want to go there? No, 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 forward. Yeah. yeah. You see, it has little notches that tells oh, yeah. you um, which way to plug it in because it only has contacts on one side, just like the clue or the micro bit. And what's nice about this one, um, this one, it's, it's I tried to show it. So you see how like the micro bit or the clue plugs in and then there's the contacts on the very right. Um, this is sunken, it's kind of like a sunken type P uh, PCB holder. So you have a cutout in the PCB and this sinks into the PCB so that the PCB and the clue or micro bit are coplanar, right? They're, they're, they're in line with each other. And this is mm -hmm. different than other connectors where like it would float above. This is good if you want it to like slide into a bigger shape and like be flat in that shape, you know what I mean? Like less bulky. Yeah, that's cool. Is it less bulky? I mean, it's it's got some bulk, but it's more evenly distributed around the PCB. So it's like slim, slim line. Next up. Okay. Feather takes flight on this keyboard feather wing. This is a keyboard feather wing from Solder Party. It's a party, a right. nice animation from A no uh, party, like Jelly. a solder party. Yeah, so um, this has a BBK, which is like a, like a BlackBerry compatible keyboard. Uh, it's got four buttons and it's got a 2.6 inch touch TFT. I think it's 320 by 240. I believe it's an ILI 9341. And so it's kind of compatible with like every known, maybe it's, maybe it's an ST series, I'll go to the but it's compatible with like every, um, yeah, this is plastic film just yeah, by the way. Lady Ada loves to keep these on forever. Uh, yes. So I always pull these off. Don't. I'm not, but, uh, that's what that's. That yeah. Is. This, this actually, well, I mean, this was removed before, so I can remove it again. There you go. Right. Does that make you happy? Well, I mean, like, what are we waiting for? The queen to visit? I yes. mean, like, take take the protector off the screen. Okay, well, it's off. Free those screens. Um, so you can type here um, on the keyboard, and it's like kind of like you're typing on like. Yeah. Well, I can't type right, but uh, it's like you're typing on a um, on a BlackBerry. It's kind of fun. It's very cute, and it's even black a uh, backlit. This is kind of like a neat effect. So um, you can even use it at night. And you can plug in like any feather. It tells you the pinouts on the back. It doesn't use a lot of pins. Which one do you like to use with this? This is my Feather M4, which is kind of like my always my go-to, my favorite Feather. Uh, it's got an on-off switch. Um, it's got a resistive screen and a screen controller. It's got a Stemic UT or Quick connector. So this is a, like a lovely little accessory. Like this is so much fun. You can make little like mm. handheld portables. Um, we have a couple in stock. I know these are in high demand. There's a NeoPixel as well. You can sort of see it blinking mm. a little bit. Um, but right. it's a fun accessory, and you can like make little portables. This would go great with Circuit Python because, of course, it's got the um, REPL on the screen, and you can like run programs with it. All right. Uh, next up. Put this back on. This is, keep it safe. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Kay. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, I put this in the uh, in the show, and I had to take a double take on this because I'm like, oh, this is really useful. Yeah. This is useful. So yeah. this is a PoE splitter. We've actually had PoE splitters before, but this one this is, is a Type different. C. And let me tell you why I thought it was useful. And this was before the other photos came in, because I'm like, oh, you know, this would be really good for a Raspberry Pi 400. 400, because it, like you power it with yes. USB-C and it has Ethernet. By the way, just a little side note. We have like note, five in stock. There's right if you go to adafruit.com forward slash Raspberry Pi 400. If you're watching this live, there's 49 left. Yeah. So, anyways, we didn't, you know, not everyone got the notifications because we don't have thousands of these yeah but uh you could do it right now the only thing is there's no discounts on these so anyways Correct. but this is really useful for this yeah so you plug it in this is perfect for um raspberry pi 4s or pi 400s um you will need to have a poe router so here i've got a tp link this is actually quite inexpensive i think this router was like 50 bucks and um you get a big honking power supply and then it provides power to the pi 400 the pi 4 uh, over USB-C, and it also gives you 100 megabit Ethernet. It's not gigabit. If people really demand the gigabit, I can get the gigabit, but it's a lot more expensive. And honestly, a lot of people don't really need the gigabit. They're happy with 100 megabit, so I thought 
um, this would be a good option. So um, yeah, you want to uh, have a um, a Pi Four also is a yeah. great pick. I will say it doesn't. It's not a good pick for earlier Raspberry Pis no. because it doesn't have a Type C connector. We have a different PoE splitter for those. Also feathers. Some feathers have USB Type C. You would use that with yeah. this. But most still have micro B because they're older. Anything with Ethernet that powers by USB C is perfect for this. This is why these two yes. things are great. Yes, and you don't need like a high. You don't need like a special converter. It's a plug and go. It's yeah. super simple. It's really cool. All in one. That's useful. Very useful. Okay. Well, next up, let's move right along to the three color ink display. Yes. So this is. It looks like. Hey, don't you already have this in stock? So we had a very similar. Feather wing in stock that was, I think, like one, it was like 200 by 100 pixel display. It was, it was like less pixels, basically. Um, and use a different screen, and that screen got discontinued. And so we kind of started a new PID. And this is a higher definition screen. So it's 250 by 122 pixels. So it's you can fit more text, more graphics on it. It's tri color. So you get black pixels and red pixels. Um, but otherwise, it's basically the same as the other feather wings we have that are 2.13 inch uh, displays. Um, if you are upgrading from the previous version, you will have to recompile the code with the new uh, chip definition. This is an SSD 1680, non-IL 0373. I really wish that this wasn't part of the deal with e-ink displays, but I'm afraid that they're constantly being revised and old chips are getting discontinued. Yeah, let's it's, do this off. It's a party. Anyways, uh, so this is um, also my favorite Feather M4 plugged in, and I have an image on the SD card here. Oh, whoa. That made it unhappy. Okay. Um, so you'll notice that um, tricolor e-inks take a while to display the image. Look, screen protector again. Shh, look, don't. Look, I'm just saying. Stop I'm touching saying, it. I'm just saying, this is my life, because... We have all these beautiful screens, but they're underneath these protectors. I get, I understand. I understand you the reason. You can't tell. I, I know what I'm just saying. Because once in a while, if start, I had my finger over it, you would. Well, know. you don't see the chat comments, and sometimes people are like, "Hey, what's that like red tab?" It's like, no, it's, it's the screen protector. It's fine. I will always make. No, you don't have to. You don't have to. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's what it is. I want a divorce. <laughs> okay, so so this is this is. It's uh, like a doily for electronics. You know, like some. Grandparents always had like the plastic cover. Yeah, that's what I'm, no, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's me. And like, but who? That's me. But like, what are you saving the couch for? Like, when is when are you gonna? You want it to look good. But but when when will you one day <laughs> say okay, we don't need to have the plastic when on the, the couch good, anymore? When the good guest visits. <laughs> when, when the good, okay, see, all right, that's what I thought. I just. <laughs> anyways, what are we doing? This. All right, I keep hold on. We're doing an electronic show, I think. I keep messing with this. Okay, so um. Sorry. So, um, oh, I was shooting the other demo. That's why I was flicking that. Okay, so you'll yeah. notice it takes 13 seconds or so, 15 seconds to display, but we have a really nice guide that shows how to convert. Uh, this is like a color image that we converted. It's me holding Blinka, and I had pink hair at the time. Um, and what's nice is, of course, it's ink, so you can remove the power. Um, one thing I did notice is after a couple seconds, the red lightens a little bit. It becomes like a slightly lighter red. Um, is If power is kept, it doesn't seem to do that. I don't know that it's one of the effects of the screen, but it's still definitely red. Um, the black doesn't dim. And um, if you did the right, you can actually have like pretty good image resolution for uh, displays that have spot color on them. Um, we have Arduino code for it. I think CircuitPython, we have a driver for the SSD 1680 as well. Um, so you can use it with any SSD 1680 ink display driver. Includes free screen protector. That's right. Okay. I All want right. to move it. Well, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, and our team, and our community, and our customers, is this. This is the SGP40, which is um, the next generation of gas sensors from Sincerion. This was actually an NPI, which is why people might be like, this sounds familiar. Mm. Um, so what this does is it has a built-in little piece of uh, gas sensing element and um, inside and a little like protector top and it heats up the piece of silicon that's doped and it can detect when there's um, volatile organic compounds. So this would be good for like detecting rotting fruit, for example, or um, alcohols in the air. 
um, or if you're you know laser cutting um, a material that emits um, it off gases, this is what it would be good for. It's not good for particulate sensing. That's a PM 2.5 sensor. We stock those too. Different sensor. This is for for gas compounds. Um, so the SGP 40 is I squared C. Um, it's very similar to the SGP 30. Um, however, one thing I do want to note is that this is being marketed by Sincerion as a, a more precise, better quality sensor. However, it does not spit out um, the E uh, effective CO2 or um, volatile organic compound index directly from the sensor. It gives you a raw value, and then you have to use their sensor processing library code, which we've ported over to Arduino. It wasn't too bad. It's in C. And then it will give you an index value from 0 to 500 based on um, how much organic gas is it detecting in the area. So it's kind of giving you like a, a qualitative value, not a quantitative value. Um, one nice thing that's about the sensor is that if you pair it with a hydrogen, uh, sorry, hydrogen, a humidity sensor or a temperature sensor or both, that's even better, you can um, get better results because uh, humidity and temperature does affect um, gas sensors. And so you want to sort of like... Uh, if you give it the humidity and temperature, uh, the ambient temperature and humidity, um, it'll use that to kind of calibrate the reading out and, and give you a more normalized reading because it can't measure the temperature on its own because inside there's a heater. So it doesn't, it can't know what the temperature really is. You need an external sensor to do that. All right. And that is. Gobble, 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 gobble.